Latanya, did you know that fathers, not only it is important for them to be in the lives of their children, but they have roles and responsibilities along with that? Yes, I did. Did you know that one of those roles is to speak words of affirmation into the lives of their children? I did. And on today's show, it is part two of the responsibilities and roles of a father. So stay tuned and we'll be right back. in the know. On today's show, we will continue a conversation that we were having about the importance of fathers in the home and uh, the role that they play in the home as well. Uh, once again, welcome my co-host, LaTanya. Hi, Murphy. Glad to be with you again in the studio to Good. talk about a subject that we really enjoy talking about. Yes, and uh, on the last broadcast, we began to talk about how it uh, fatherlessness or absentee fatherism can affect the child and even from our own experiences we know what it's like to have that that portion of your life uh, without the father yes uh, we talked about on the last broadcast the things that affect the home affect the children affect the family and just the impact that uh, that the father has on the children whether absent or or present and so if you're joining us today again like Murphy said we're talking about uh, the effects of fathers have on the children uh, the lack of the absence thereof and, and even uh, the positive effects of as well uh, that the father has in the home and on the children and sometimes fathers we, we talked about also that every father is not in the home but yet you still play an important part in the lives of your children yes a very important part um, especially towards being examples and setting structure and so many different things um, and I think on, I believe that on today you know we're going to continue not only to discuss that but we're also going to look at what scripture says and not only what scripture says but also under, uh, find the roles that fathers play a, in the uh, the lives of the children uh, because a lot of times they we, we, we don't have that uh, as a child um, one thing that I, we talked about on the last show was and I've seen it for myself um, is the family structure yes and when you have a solid unit what that looks like mm -hmm. uh, even for I know for you and your husband um, especially at Victoria's life I see you know your husband praying and your husband leading in prayer and different things of that nature and that is one of the most important things that a father must be able to do is to be the priest not only of the home but also be a priest or a godly example for mm -hmm. the children. Yes. Um, because scripture tells us, uh, Father, do not provoke your children to wrath exactly. or to anger. Mm -hmm. So, you know, I believe that as a father, that should be our, uh, one of our main goals and our main yes. objectives is to be a leader in the spiritual aspect as well. That is true. You know, the scripture talks about as well that when you sit down at the table, uh, when you rise up at the table, going down, this is why we do, to put them in, in remembrance, this yeah. is why we do, this is what uh, our family means, this is what we stand for. And a lot of times we, we always point the scripture, but it's a guidance yes. uh, as to this is how we're to govern ourselves and fathers. And this is the role of the father. Yeah. This is the role of the father in the lives of the children that, hey, this is our name. You know, you hear a lot of times when, particularly when uh, athletes go out or just sons yeah. go out, period, their dad says, listen, my name is good. Don't, don't you yeah. mess it up. You yeah. know, don't be the one to mess it up. And so father's role, a part of that role is to say, hey, this is our name. And the Bible does talk about a good name uh, being, being to, should be chosen rather than silver and so fathers leave legacy they they give that name they build that name they work hard to build that name up and to pass it on so the fathers do have a very vital role in the lives of the children yes yes and and that's so powerful when you say that that not only they leave an, an inheritance but I'm thinking on a spiritual uh, from a spiritual standpoint I was thinking about three men in the Bible that actually went to God or went to Christ rather on behalf of their children mm -hmm. one of them being Jairus yes he went on behalf of his daughter being sick yes. he went to Christ himself mm -hmm. uh, another instance was 
when the man, uh, uh, when Jesus was praying and he was at the Mount of Transfiguration, but then the Bible talks about his his disciples uh, trying to cast out the demons mm -hmm. on behalf. The Father went on behalf of His Son. Yes, you know, uh, and and that right there it shows that the Father has a responsibility. Yes. Hey, I'm standing in the gap yes. for my child, mm -hmm. and a lot of times we don't do that, or we don't think that that is important, but that is one of the most important things that, that, that as a father that we must be able to do. Exactly. Because if we don't do it, um, the enemy has the responsibility or the, the capability, forgive me, the capability of taking our children out. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, people know I love dictionary. Dot com, and if you don't, I love dictionary.com. You know, the, the examples that you gave with Jairus and them going to, the, to, to Christ himself, the first thing that stood out was advocate. Yeah. And, and so the advocate in Love Dictionary, and it says to speak or write in favor of, to support or urge by argument uh, and recommend publicly. It, it also says uh, just to, to be an advocate. Uh, and, and here's the example, a father who advocates for his disabled child is actually yeah. the example yeah. that dictionary uh, chooses. A lot of times we joke and say that, you know, the dictionary and, and Merriam-Webster, they're, they're safe. And so, but here's the thing here where they're advocating, they're standing on behalf and acting on behalf of their children. Yeah. Who better than the father? Yeah. Uh, we talked about the fact that we're, we're created not only in the image of God, but we're created in the image of our father and the likeness of our, of our natural fathers. And we carry that DNA. We carry uh, what, what our fathers have and, and have been put on the inside of us. Who better to speak on behalf? Who better to write on behalf, to stand publicly on behalf than the father. And we need fathers that will advocate, that will go to bat per se on, the, on behalf of the children. Yeah, and, and, and that is where we fall short sometimes. Yes. Because we don't have someone standing on our, be, on mm -hmm. our half or pleading our case. Yes. And, and, and that can, you know, leave a child in a vulnerable state. Exactly. So as soon as someone stands up for them, uh, let's say, let's take for example a bully, that, mm -hmm. that child may be getting bullied and there's no father there and someone stands up for them, they have a tendency to draw to that person, which leads me to my next point, uh, they have a tendency to drop because that, that person protected yes. them and <laughs> made them feel safe. Mm -hmm. And uh, the, the, another role of a father is being a protector. Yes. And if the father is not there, they're not able to protect and be able to make that child feel safe no matter what the situation is. Mm -hmm. I was watching a show, uh, it was a cooking show, and there it was MasterChef Kids or something similar to that. And they were doing a, a, a replay and the young lady, she was having a problem opening a jar and her dad was up in the audience and she ran to her dad. <laughs> yes. She ran to her dad and he opened the jar for her. So it's that dad being there when, when, when they're in a position, kids are in a position where they uh, are not able to do mm -hmm. certain things. You know, it's, <clears throat> excuse me, it's funny that you would say that because one time, uh, one summer, my stepdaughter was visiting and, uh, and so my husband was outside talking to, with the neighbor, actually. And she actually walks past me and literally takes the jar outside for him to open. Yeah. <laughs> because here it is, it speaks of strength. Yeah. And so things that are closed, my dad can open them yeah. for me. And she just bypasses me and literally goes outside to her dad. And, and his question was, did she not see you standing there? She wants you to open it. And so it does. It's, it's, and I don't think we, we do things, and I don't think that we are really cognizant of it, but it's symbolic of strength. If no one else, and such uh, an insignificant or what may seem insignificant, my dad can save the day. Yeah. You know. And so I can't tell you the many times that my mother talks about uh, my grandfather. And so my son says, gosh, you know, even though they remember my grandfather, they say, when you all talk about him, you make him seem like a legend. You yeah. know, say, oh, he was, he was a legend. <laughs> he was a legend, if, if not in anyone else's eyes, in our eyes. And so he says, you make him, you all make him seem larger than life. And for us, he was larger than life. Yeah. That was her dad. That was my granddad. And so if no one else can open the, open the jar, daddy, daddy can. can do it. Daddy <laughs> yes. can do it. And, 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 you know, so that, that right there says a lot about the father being in the home yes. and the structure and, mm -hmm. or even in the life of the kid. Because a lot of times we understand in today's generation and today's society, it's getting greater and greater that the fathers are not in the home. Mm -hmm. And as I was doing research, it's been changed from uh, absentee father to non-resident father. Yes. 
You know, we have these politically correct terms now. Um, and with that, it, it still does not negate one of the most important things uh, that is the responsibility that a father has for their child. Mm -hmm. um, and with that, it, <clears throat> it kind of leads into the next point of the father being a provider. Yes. A lot of times we think being a provider is just financial. Mm -hmm. And it's not just financial. Exactly. It is being able to support emotionally. It is able to be able, being able to promote, pro, being able to provide spiritually. Yes. And uh, all of these different ways to where the needs of that child is met. Mm -hmm. um, and and we don't do that a lot of times when we are not in the life of the child. It's exactly. You know, um, you talked about those those needs, and again. Uh, the physiological needs and the safety needs and being belong in those in those relationships and I know on the last broadcast I talked about the dad that I met who said I have taken my daughters out and we see that a lot of times we see the uh, father-daughter dances a lot of times yeah. we see that uh, because it's needed those social skills are needed and even in the lives of of the young men and the daughters as well your presence if you're joining us today I want to say this that if you're joining us today we're talking about fathers and the importance of the, the, the fathers the role that fathers play in the lives of their children and so having said that you know talking about the father-daughter dance is a very special time very sweet time uh, when the fathers take those daughters and we talked about the fact that those social skills uh, mm -hmm. and that father shows those daughters this is how perhaps you know you do have some fathers that not are just non-resident but perhaps have passed yeah um, and so here here it is that it's very important that 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 uncle that mature male steps up in the lives of the children even biblically you know when 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 those brothers died they raised up a seed it was very important that that father's name the legacy remained and so uh, perhaps the father's not just a non-resident but perhaps deceased per perhaps serving somewhere uh, or whatever the case may be everything in you a responsible male your brother your uncle uh, your father whomever is very important that someone steps yeah. up and 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 uh, takes that responsibility as a male figure as a father figure yeah. because there's just some things that have to come from the Man. father or yeah. the male and I'm sorry you know you you talk about oh I'm the mama and the daddy no you're not no you're can not you can never be that yeah. and there's some things that have to come from a male perspective and from that man that only a man can deposit in the lives of children and if not that uncle that brother can yeah. and 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 I'm, I'm gonna touch on these two things but one of them that just stuck out to me was when when you said that there are only certain things that a child can get from a father. Yes. Especially from a male perspective. Um, when, you look in, when you look in Genesis, and not only in Genesis, but throughout Israel, which was formerly mm -hmm. Jacob, when he was on his deathbed, mm -hmm. even, even before then, Abraham and Isaac, yes. they, the father was the one that spoke the blessing, the blessing. Mm -hmm. over the child. Yes. So uh, what, what, what's happening is if you're not there, the blessing has a tendency to die mm -hmm. with the father or is not released upon the child. And because it's not released, released upon the child, they have a tendency to walk with a closed door or closed heaven, if you will, <laughs> above them because they, the, the blessing has not been released yes. on them. Mm -hmm. uh, so it, 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 you know, it's important for us to understand that as fathers, as men, that we have the responsibility to release, to release the, the blessing. blessing. Yeah, that's over, powerful. Over the child. That's powerful. And and a lot of times we don't have it and and we don't get it because of not being there. Yes. And I'm not saying you have to be in the home, but be, but what I'm saying there is a responsibility that lies upon you and lies upon us as fathers to speak the blessing over our children. Um so, so, you know, it is important, even though it did not happen for you or uh, for some of us, we still have that responsibility to do it for our children. Yes, exactly. And, and, and even with that leading to the next thing, fathers have a responsibility to teach their young sons, teach their sons how to work. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to prove it. Not only, not only is it uh, where in Jewish customs, the, the child usually works the same type of job mm -hmm. or same type of business as the father, the yes. son usually. But when you look uh, 
it's, it's, I, think it's, I know it's in Kings. When Eli, with the woman, with the, uh, with the son that died, when he said, all is well. Mm -hmm. we, we, we shout about that uh, because we, we declare, you know, the all is well statement and all of that. But the pretext to that is this. The son was in the field with the father, father working. Yes. Mm -hmm. The father understood the responsibility of teaching his son how mm -hmm. to work. But when he got sick, he sent him to yes. the mother. Go meet your, you know, go yes. meet your mom. <laughs> let her nurture you. Let her take care of you. But it is our responsibility to teach the sons how to work. Yes. And a lot of times we don't do that anymore. We allow them to to sit in the rooms and play games, or we allow them to to do this or to do that uh, without any teaching them any responsibility to work. Which which helps me to understand that we're raising somebody's husband. Yes. <laughs> well, you know, we're raising somebody's yes. daddy. Mm -hmm. and, and, and if we don't teach them how to work, we don't teach them. They are a, an example of us. Exactly. That's it. And they're, and they're going to replicate. They're, gonna, they're going to reproduce. So basically because the Bible does say to reproduce after your own kind. Yeah, yeah. After yeah. your own kind. And so it's very important, again, like you said, to teach them uh, to work. One of the things, you know, uh, we talked on the last broadcast, you know, from different perspectives. Yeah. Um, but I saw the example of, of my husband taking the boys, that take them with you yeah. and, and show them things from a male perspective. And again, if you get sick, you come see mama. You got a yeah. fever, you come see, you come and see me. And there are things that I can teach, there are things that I can share from a mother's perspective. But the truth of the matter is, they're, they're, whether girl or boy, there's ne there needs to be time spent yes. with the father. Yeah. And again, uh, just joining in, we're talking about the importance of the father in the lives of the children from needs, uh, not only spiritual, but those social needs. There are a lot of things mm. that we get from the father. And we also talked about, Murphy, a father affirms, yes. a father speaks life, and you talked Identity, about that. Yeah. And one of the things that, uh, when, when you said that, the difference between the mother and the father, and just that's just how God created us, that we, we speak a lot of times from our emotions. Yes, we're sons of God, I, I, I got it. Yeah. We're sons of God, and we, we, we're, we're led by the Spirit of the Lord, but one of the examples, because you, you mentioned Jacob, uh, when one of the wives, I can't remember, Rachel or Leah, but she began to name the son and she called him Benoni. Benoni she said, yeah. son of my sorrow. She and it no. took the father yeah. to stand up to say, no, he's, he's going to be named Benjamin. He's the son of my right hand because mothers tend to want to name it by our experience. Yeah. And it's a father that says, no, there's more than that. And I'm seeing beyond that. And he's the son of my right hand. And I'm going, it's the father that sees what God has spoken. It's the father because it's the father that carries and so here it is and so it's that father that sees and speaks what's to be yeah, and a lot of times yeah. we speak oh my gosh this has been just you know if you ask a woman like and I'm not trying to say we, we can't see, we don't have vision, but what I am saying, you ask, oh my gosh, it's been a horrible day. I don't feel well, I don't see. Yeah. And from that male perspective, that father perspective, that visionary says, no, this is what it is and this is what I'm gonna call it. Yeah. And, and I remember when my sons were born, before both of them were born, I uh, was laying in bed and I can remember Holy Spirit just speaking and saying, his name is gonna be this. Mm -hmm. And I was asked the question, where did you get the name from? From God. And same thing with my younger son. And they were like, where did this name come from? From Holy Spirit. And um, it, 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 it took on, they, it, they're taking on the form of not only that name, but the identity that has been given to yes. them. And as they got older, and now that they are old enough, we were sitting at the table one day, and I took time with both of them, and I began to speak over their life. And I began to tell them, you're going to do great things, and you're going to do this, this, this. And I wasn't speaking just from the, 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 the perspective of, I just want to encourage them. I felt led at that time, at that moment, to speak these things over their life mm -hmm. so that way they'll know, okay, this is what life should look like for me. This is what life is going to be like for me. And, and, and it is important for us to be able to, to do that. Yes, as you know, you, you talked about uh, you brought in the, the Jewish perspective. Mm. Um, those names were prophetic. Yes, and so one of the things that uh, that I that I love to tell people is that uh, there's a book written about us. There's a book that's written, and so uh, the experience of, of when I ministered along with other women and we would go and minister to women, one of the things that we would give them is a frame, this is what your name means. And so it's beautiful, you know, your name's Christine and we can see the Christ yeah. in that. And so one day someone said, what about my name? It's an urban name, I think my mom made it up or whatever. And I said, you know, the great thing about that is that God wrote the book mm -hmm. and allowed your parents to 
to, to name it, yeah. to put a title on it, but everything that's encased on the inside of it, it doesn't change. And so when you said, listen, I sat down, I began to minister to my sons and tell them, this is who you are. This is, you know, so every time they hear their name called, they also hear along with it, everything that's yeah. written about them, everything that's that's spoken about them. Every time they hear their name called, it's like, oh, my name doesn't mean anything. That's how I feel about my name, Latanya. What in, where in the world did you get that from? But God allowed my mother to just put a title to what he already said. And so how important it is that as a father to speak blessings over your children, every time they hear their name called, they get to hear everything that's in case and that comes along with what God has already spoken about them. And as a father, you have to know the importance of speaking that over your children. Yes, and, and, and it, this is just a question that hit my spirit. And you know, maybe someone may be asking, what if I'm not with my child? Mm -hmm. That. I understand that situation. Um, and maybe you only spend a two hours. I don't know what your, your custody thing or whatever that may be. But when you do have time and when you are with them, take that opportunity to speak life yes. into them. Every time you see them, every time you're with them, take that opportunity. I feel that. Take yes. that opportunity to speak life into them because you don't know what's around them yes. and the, situ the situation because some situations can be toxic. Yes. My mother and my father were not together. Um, but one thing she never did was she never spoke negative or said anything. She didn't say anything really about him <laughs> yes. in no regard, not saying that it was bad or good, but she didn't say anything. But what I did hear, I heard from the streets and I heard from secondhand uh, knowledge. You, you're going to be just like your daddy, all of that stuff. But I'm saying that to say you never know what's going on around that child. Yes. You never know what's being spoken. But when you have the opportunity, you speak life. Yes. And, and you know, you said something that even if they're not there, even if they are, if you are in the in the home mm -hmm. uh, with the children as well, because, again, they've gone to school. Yeah. They've been in, in atmospheres. You know, I shared before, like we have one, he's a, our baby's a teenager, very vital stage. Yeah. And so it, it takes me, it's, it's great. You know, mom's like, oh, you're handsome. You, you know, you're, you're, you're very handsome, but it, it's something different because I hear uh, the, the youngest one and my husband having the conversations about you're growing up, you look nice, you're, you actually are nice looking. And it means it's, it's, you know, it's a blush factor because mama said I'm cute. You know, I'm, mom, I'm the baby, you know, mom's supposed to say I'm cute. But when your dad looks at you and says, yes, you, you are growing up to be a very nice young man. This is who you are. This is what I see in you. It takes a, it, I mean, it has a, a whole new, it opens up a whole new world, has a whole different meaning. And I remember one time visiting uh, my father-in-law and even at the age that my husband was fully grown uh, with children, you know, married, my father-in-law actually looked at him. He said, you, every time I see you, the older you get, the better looking you get. And at that age, that meant the world for his father to tell him that. Yeah. It meant everything to him. He said, you are, a, his father actually told him you are aging nicely. And it meant the world to him. Yeah, because, because it, it, it I, 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 from a male perspective, we are constantly looking for that approval. Yes. Of every stage of our life. Mm -hmm. um, when you're a young man, when you're playing sports, uh, you're looking for that you did good. Yes. Uh, when you get your first real job or whenever you get your your own car, you did good. Yes. You're always looking for that approval, you know, uh, when you get a promotion, congratulations, you did good, or whatever it is. Hey, look at my grades, I did this. Mm -hmm. It's okay for mom, but when it's dad, you did good, it, it does something, makes your post, your, your chest post out or stick out a <laughs> yeah. little more, mm -hmm. and, and you know, you stand a little taller, because you have that approval that you've been looking for. I'm working hard and that's all I want. And then, but on the other side, some fathers don't know how to mm -hmm. celebrate their kids, which can lead to self, low self-esteem or yes. self-esteem issues and rejection and all of these things. So it is important to be able to celebrate because yes. as a child, you're looking for the approval of the father. It, you know, it's very important because one of the things, my, my husband does not come from a military background, but I do. And my grandfather, who he cherished a, a lot, um, when he got promoted one time, and, and at this point, my grandfather had, had passed, and he said, I wish your granddaddy, I wish granddaddy was here to see this. So he went straight to a male perspective, someone he could relate to. He said, of all people that I wish could see that what I've accomplished is granddaddy, meaning my grandfather, yeah. because that's who he related to as a father and in being in the military. So he went straight to 
the male figure that he deemed, you know, listen, I, I would love to be celebrated by no one else yeah. other than your grandfather going straight to the male. So again, fathers and grandfathers and uncles, and we're really talking about fathers today and the importance that fathers play in the role of children from celebration to uh, just affirmation, you did good. You know, there's this saying like, add a boy, you know, good, yeah. good going. Yeah. And just not for, for, for sons as well, but for daughters as well. It's very important. Again, just referring back to a dad that I had a, a opportunity to speak with briefly at a networking event. He said, yeah, th his daughters come and say, am I okay? You know, is this okay? What do I look like? And he says, yeah, thumbs up, thumbs down, eh, tweak this because they're wanting the dad's approval and yeah. what dad thinks about the matter. Yeah, and, and, and that is like the, the most, uh, that is the ultimate thing. Um, and but, but we're running out of time. This is so <laughs> good. Um, also, I'm looking here, it also talks about being a trainer. Mm -hmm. the, you know, Bible says train the child in the way they should yes. teach them and help them to develop in the way they should go. But when they get old, they won't depart from it because why? The foundation has already been laid. Mm -hmm. um, but a lot of times, you know, there's no one there, so they don't know what it looks like, what mm -hmm. it's supposed to be. Um, and we talked about the working as well, right. but also from a spiritual standpoint, from a physical standpoint, taking care of yourself. And uh, I, I had a couple of young men uh, that came to my shop, and one of them, uh, 18, 19 years old, he said, I don't know how to shave. Mm. And you wonder where is the dad or where is the man? I didn't ask the question, but where is the one that, that's training or teaching them mm -hmm. how to groom themselves right. and how to take care of themselves, how to wear clothing and, you know, all these things that, 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 that men teach men yes. or young men. Um, so it's important for us to be able to train them and teach them not only in the ways of the Lord, but also just personal stuff. Yes, exactly. Because a lot of times we don't, even when sexual matters and all of these things that come up, because a lot of times young men get caught up uh, having babies out of wedlock or having children because they don't know what that looks like. What yes. it, to, and I'm not promoting fornication or anything, but they don't know what it looks like to have sex. Yes. You know, and, and they need a father to teach them this is what it looks like. You, you know, you, 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 you mentioned uh, out of wedlock. Well, our children were in wedlock and he didn't know what to do. <laughs> Be because the father was not there for right, him. Right, and right. so, yeah, we're, and so here's the thing. I don't know how to be a dad, whether I'm in the home or non-resident, right. resident or non-resident, right. I'm clueless. And so he had to refer to other men and still again, going back to the importance of fathers and you, you make up fathers, yeah. you know, or you make up uncles and, and here's this family, you know, that you, you're reaching out. And so again, very important for the dads to be there. Very important for the fathers to be there, yeah. resident or non-resident. Your, your, your uh, presence and the lives of your children are definitely needed. Yes, and, and, and fathers, as we close on today, if you don't have a relationship with your, uh, with your kid, try to get one. Yes. Work on getting one. We'll be praying that, you know, relationships are reestablished because the Bible says, G uh, God said it this way, he said, and we're going to close. He said that I'm returning the hearts of the father to yes. the children and the father, the children and the hearts of the children to the father. To the father. It, this is so good. It's we ran good. out of time. It's needed. <laughs> uh, Latanya, once again, they are. You're in the know. In the know.